um, your colleagues in the first part who have spoken mainly about the medieval Armenian translations. In this second part, we will uh, talk about different topics, about the Armenian Syriac cultural and ecclesiastical relations, about the typographical activities of the Armenian Catholic Mkhitaryists congregation, and at the end, about the religious situation in Armenia. Reverend Father Nikadim Yuhanayev is now serving the Assyrian community and minority of Armenia. Meanwhile, he is working on his PhD thesis about the Christological position of the Assyrian Church. Recently, the new Catholic Patriarch of the Holy Apostolic Catholic Assyrian Church of the East, His Holiness Mar Ava I, was intronized, becoming 122nd spiritual head of this church. This is a really great occurrence in the life of a Christian church in the face of the challenging situation in the Near and Middle East. So congratulations to that occasion and let us begin uh, our conversation with the Armenian Syriac relations reaching back far into the centuries. Please Reverend. Uh, thank you, uh, Mrs. Anahit. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be a part of this conversation, uh, especially when my supervisor is here, is present, Professor Shirinan. Uh, and uh, I hope that uh, she will like my uh, speech. So I should speak about Armenian and Assyrian relations. Uh, Armenian nation during uh, its centuries old history had political, economic and cultural close relations with many nations, including uh, Assyrians, which were their neighbors. Assyrians had a rich culture that spread over Near East and over the Far East states. Thus, Syriac literature was the bridge uniting Eastern and Western cultures. Being immediate neighbors of Armenians, Assyrians were in close relations with Armenians, many of whose have lived, worked, and operated in Armenian provinces since all times and later on adapted to live with Armenians with their customs and mode of life. As Syriac and Armenian sources state, Armenian children besides Greeks studied also Syriac in schools opened in different regions of Armenia in the beginning of fourth century. The Syriac preachers had that revived their activity founded new schools in southern provinces of Armenia on their initiative where certainly Syriac language and uh, literature were taught along with Christian doctrine. In Armenia, church ceremonies and reading of holy books were conducted also in Syriac uh, in parallel with Greek language. In general, the spread of Christianity in Armenia promoted the rapprochement of Assyria, Armenian Syriac relations, development and expansion of those relations. Owing to this rapprochement, the relations between Armenian and Syriac authors strengthened in the beginning of the fifth century. After creation of Armenian alphabet, first of all, Armenian translators translated the Bible from Syriac the translation of religious and historical compositions followed it. The first translations were namely, translators were namely those who had uh, laid down the foundation of Armenian literature that attained perfection in the fifth century. Besides the Bible, Armenians translated from Syriac also historical, some biographical and ecclesiastical uh, and other compositions uh, in the beginning of 5th century. Forefather of the Armenian historiography, Moses Forenazi, states that ecclesiastical history by Eusebius of Caesarea was translated from Syriac at Mesrop's instruction. One can't but mention the influence of Ephraim the Syrian's works on Armenian literature, one of the most outstanding persons of the fourth century. The influence of Ephraim, the Syrians, Madrashas, and Memras on Armenian hymnarium is great. So uh, 51 from numerous sacred songs of Ephraim, the Syrian are known via Armenian old translations. The Syriac originals of those have been lost. Also many prayers from Ephraim's works, interpretations of Old Testament, and most important yet is survive it owing to the Armenian translations. 
One of the best Syriac literary memorials, Goria and Shimon Martyrology from translations made in the fifth century from Syriac, which is striking with subtle colors of Eastern poetry and splendid images, had a great influence on Armenian literature. This Armenian translation was one of the sources of Agathangelos' History of Armenians. These biographical compositions are valuable as they give such historical and geographical information that we don't meet in other literature and historical works of the given period of time. Spiritual bond between Armenians and Assyrians in early period was so close that sitting on the pontifical throne of the Armenian church by clergymen with Syriac ethnicity was considered a normal phenomenon. Unfortunately, Armenian Syriac relation, church relations slightly worsened after the Council of Ephesus. In order to form a correct notion about Armenian Syriac church relations, it should be mentioned that Syriac church is divided into two big uh, separate branches. Uh, Holy Apostolic Catholic Assyrian Church of the East and Syriac Orthodox Church, also known as uh, Syriac uh, Jacobite Church. And Assyrian Church of the East is also known in a medieval literature uh, as a Persian, Persian Church, Church of the East, uh, and Nestorian Church. As we know from the church history, Nestorianism is a heresy that appeared as a result of theological views of Petrarch of Constantinople, Nestorius, and opinions uh, regarding Nestorian and his teaching had been contradictory till nowadays in the scientific world. If we take a look, for example, at Book of Heraclitus, which belongs to Nestorius, we shall see that uh, actually Nestorian, uh, Nestorius, we can say that he was not Nestorian. So uh, the reason of making of um, Assyrian Church of the East Nestorian was in the uniqueness of linguistic thinking of that church and being separated from Roman Okumene and its independent development that was the cause of resembling Christological formula drafted by the church with an historian heresy. Since medieval period, Assyrian Church of the East has attempted to prove in every possible way that its belief isn't con connected with Nestorian heresy that caused two priests or two sons uh, belief. However, we, it uh, didn't anathemize Nestorius Petrarch of Constantinople. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, indeed, uh, Eastern and Western Syrian denominations or confessions are sometimes confusing. And one would like, first of all, to understand what is their dogmatical position. Uh, thank you for speaking about generally Syriac Armenian relations. And thank you also for sharing with the Armenian nation good and bad times during uh, centuries until today. Our next uh, guest is Father Vahan uh, Hovagimian from the Armenian Catholic Mahitarists Congregation of Vienna who I would like to ask to tell about the typographical activity of the congregation, which is of highest interest uh, for patristic studies, as many of us already know about it, have uh, used the publications in their uh, studies. But please uh, feel free to tell a few sentences about the congregation himself, as our audience is maybe not very well familiar with your congregation. Uh, wir setzen unser Gespräch hier kurz auf Deutsch fort und möchten uh, Pater Vahan Hovagimian bitten, über die armenisch-katholischen Gitarristenkongregation zu erzählen und auch über jene Editionen, die in den patristischen Kreisen wohl vertraut sind. Bitte, Pater. Dankeschön für die Einladung und auch für die Repräsentation. Ich bin ein Mechitaristenpriester schon seit 37 Jahren, geboren in Syrien. Und das hat auch äh, in mir als Jugendlicher äh, diese Beziehung zu sagen, Ephraim aus äh, Damaskus oder Syrien und diese Patristik. Äh, ich habe gespürt und ich habe auch an der Universität äh, beim Pro Professor Sutner, das ist der, der hat uns dann äh, armenische Kultur und so weiter näher gebracht. 
Jetzt zu den Mechitaristen. Um über die Mechitaristen zu sprechen, es ist wichtig, dass wir auch über unseren Gründer Mechitar zu sprechen, nämlich er ist in Sebaste geboren, deshalb sagt man allgemein Mechitar von Sebaste, schon im 17. Jahrhundert, das war 1676 eigentlich, und wo er dann nachher sein Leben in Armenien verbracht hat und auch in Diaspora damals, das war dann in der, im Kloster Heilige Nishan, was Heilige Kreuz bedeutet, aber als Jugendlicher schon mit 18, 20 Jahren hat er nicht das gefunden, was er da gesucht hat. Er hat gesucht etwas, das ihm, sagen wir, Wissenschaft und Religion gleichzeitig sich zu interessieren. Und von einem Kloster zu einem anderen Klöster ist er gegangen, bis er auf der Sevansee dort in einer Vision eigentlich die Mutter Gottes gesehen hat und ihr ihm, sie hat ihm viel Kraft gespendet dadurch. Und gründete er damals in Konstantinopel 1701 das armenisch-katholische Kloster und deshalb sind wir Brücke zwischen Ost und West. Diese Brückenfunktion ist groß geschrieben im Leben unseres Gründers zwischen Okzident und Orient eigentlich. Und eines seiner, sagen wir, Ziele, großen Ziele war das, sehr wichtig für uns, dass er zum Beispiel den Westen mit seiner Patrologie und auch Wissenschaft und Theologie zum Osten zu bringen wo Armenien schon ein Teil des Ostens ist, nicht auch äh, Grenze, aber schon äh, Osten, mit Osten griechische und auch dann auch syrische äh, verbunden, war das äh, und auch umgekehrt die ar armenische Patristik äh, zu, zum Westen zu, zu bringen. Und dadurch sind auch nachher sehr viele äh, westliche die für sich mit Patristik und auch Patrologie äh, beschäftigt haben, war das sehr wichtig. Und wenn man dann auch das äh, armenische Wort nimmt und übersetzt, Haira Panotion, Aswaza Panotion, Haira Panotion, äh, ist auch Pater und äh, Logistik oder auch ja, miteinander genommen. Da ist es eine Übersetzung davon. Und die ersten seinen sagen wir, Jünger, die er ausgebildet hat, hat er geschickt, um in den verschiedenen Schulen eigentlich Bildung und Religion zu unterrichten. Das war auch immer in den Mechitaristischen Schulen, auch groß auf den Mechitaristenfahnen geschrieben, Religion, Vaterland, Bildung und Nation, diese wirklich Gefühle. Und es gibt auch ein berühmtes Wort von ihm, wo er immer kritisiert wurde von Westen, dass er zu sehr östlich ist und von Osten, dass er sehr westlich mit dem Westen Abendland verbunden hat. Er hat gemeint, und das ist auch wichtig in seinen Schriften, seinen Briefen und auch Werke, wo er auch äh, übersetzt hat und auch einen Kommentar zum Matthäus-Evangelium. Wenige wissen, dass er das ganze Matthäus-Evangelium äh, interpretiert, ein Kommentar von ihm. Über einige tausend Seiten sind es. Man kann das dann nachlesen und ich werde dann nachher auch die Quellenangaben einige er erwähnen. Das sind auch sehr wichtig. In diesem Werk hat er gemeint, meine Flügel sind es. Einmal meine Nationalität, mein Verständnis zum Vaterland und das andere ist meine Religion. Und das eine opfere ich nicht für das andere. Beide sind wichtig, um emporzusteigen, zu Gott zu steigen. Und diese Tradition wurde in seinen, sagen wir, Studenten und auch Nachfolger, die dann von damals Konstantinopel über Griechenland, Morea, nach Venedig gekommen sind. Unser Mutterhaus in Venedig und von dort sind ein Teil der Patres über Triest nach Wien gekommen. 
Mein heutige, beide würde ich dann erwähnen, eigentlich seit im Jahre 2000 war eine Union zwischen unseren beiden Klöster jetzt und die Namen, wenn man dann Alishan nennt, es ist auch Alishan hundertprozentig gehört zu Wien und Venedig und umgekehrt Dashian und andere Nerses Arginian, das sind wichtig für unsere Bildung und die Patres haben auch in vielen Sprachen sich kommunizieren können. Das war auch sehr wichtig für die Wissenschaftler von Europa, hier im Kloster weiterarbeiten zu können, mit den Patres zu kooperieren und die Bibliothek und das Kloster allgemein, der Mechitaristen mit seiner Kirche und mit den Patres, äh, hat auch sehr intensiv und auch Vorteile verschafft für Wissenschaftler. Viele, die nicht direkt nach Armenien kommen konnten, in der Zeit, wo Armenien kommunistisch war, ja, das war Venedig und Wien waren wichtige Quellen für uns. Interessanterweise auch, äh, dass auch der Bruder von Aivazowski, Gabriel Aivazian, hat in Venedig diese Pasma-Werk rausgegeben. Da kann man auch die venezianische Schule hier sehen, mehr Kunst, Religion und auch in den Miniaturen, was da dargestellt wird. Und in, später auch in, in Wien ist auch diese Zeitschrift, am Anfang war das ein Wochenzeitschrift, Schapata Fert, Europa. Wenn heute, heutzutage Europa sehr wichtig ist für die ganze Welt eigentlich, damals haben die Patres schon schätzen gelernt, wie Europa sehr wichtig ist, diese Zeitschrift mit Europa. Und nachher wurde dann, es ist es monatlich erschienen und hat man den Namen geändert auf Pantes Amsoria mit zwölf äh, zwölf sagen wir Hefte oder auch zwölf Teile äh, gemeint jedes Monat und deshalb diese Amsoria Pantes Amsoria äh, würde ich äh, den Leuten, die, die sich wirklich interessieren, äh, auch wichtig äh, diese in der unsere Webseite ganz einfach um Mechitaristen zu schreiben mit TH und dann Punkt .org kann man fast alle Publikationen der Patres dort einsehen. Es gibt auch Teile, die zum Beispiel, die, die wichtig sind für Grammatik, dann gibt es auch für verschiedene Übersetzungen und besonders auch, was unter dem Kapitel steht, ist Theologie. Dann sind auch sehr wichtig, man findet es und auch die Übersetzungen. Wichtig ist auch äh, einiges, was von Hantes Amsor, ja, sind es auch als Asgain Madenataran rausgegeben und wirklich, das ist so eine Quelle für, für Glauben und auch Wissenschaft. Wenn Sie mehr auch hören wollen, äh, bin ich gerne bereit, auch dazu noch was zu sagen. Anahit, you are, Anahit, muted. You are muted. <lacht> ja, ja, ich vergesse jedes Mal, aber ja, ja. Ähm, ich glaube, jetzt wissen die Zuschauer zumindest, wo äh, die patristischen Werke äh, herausgegeben wurden. Also wenn es äh, auf dem Titelblatt äh, Wien oder Venedig steht, dann ist das wirklich die Druckerei äh, der Maritaristen Kongregation. Und, aber ich wollte nur mal sehr kurz, dass Sie vielleicht nur einen Satz äh, sagen, warum haben die den Maritaristen eine so große Aufmerksamkeit nebst den auf Armenisch verfassten Werken, gerade der ins Armenisch übersetzte Literatur äh, geschenkt? Ja, äh, wie ich es vorhin erwähnt habe, wichtig war, war für uns, nämlich in der Zeit, wo Mechita lebte, 17. bis 17., 18. Jahrhundert, würde ich sagen, von 1676, äh, hat er gesehen, eine große Lücke eigentlich, wo es 
denn der, dieser Westen war nicht so vertreten und äh, die, die, sagen wir, die Geistlichkeit hat sich begnügt, um mit schönen schöne Messen zu lesen oder auch damals so Gebete auszusprechen, aber den ganzen Tag manchmal in den Klöstern mit, muss ich äh, leider sagen, mit Müsegang und haben den wirklich nicht die Zeit ausgenutzt. Es war für ihn wichtig, dass beides von, vom Westen, dass wir etwas lernen und unsere Kultur auch zum Westen bringen, was sehr reich ist, was wir auch sehr schön gehört haben, auch die Werke von Nersesh Morali und auch andere. Das ist dann auch eine, eine ganz große, wichtige Brücke. Und wie gesagt, kann man sehr viele theologische Werke nachschauen und lesen, die bis heute erhalten sind und das kann man auch erwerben. Ich danke Ihnen. I will switch. We will switch yeah. to English again. Of course, yeah. today not as much as it would be desirable, but critical and non-critical editions of the Armenian translations of Church Fathers are being published all over the world. But the mentioned publications of the Mechitarists Fathers will always remain valuable for us. Thank you, Father uh, Vahan, for telling us about the activities of your congregation. And in the next uh, few minutes, we will speak about the religious uh, situation in Armenia. And I have asked uh, Dr. Harutyun Harutyunyan from the American University of Armenia to represent a brief review of it, of it concentrating maybe on uh, two main points, uh, the role of the Armenian Apostolic Church for the Armenian state and nation during centuries and now, and the situation uh, with different Christian denominations and uh, religion, religions in nowadays Republic of Armenia. Please, Haritsu. Thank you very much for this uh, great event and uh, also for the invitation. I will be happy to explore the religious situation in current Armenia. Um, which is a fascinating story connected uh, both uh, with the uh, historical uh, development of this region, but also uh, with the last uh, three decades after the uh, collapse of Soviet Union. So in order to understand uh, what's going on here, we have to go a little bit back, but just uh, as an information, if you will open the official website of the uh, president of Republic of Armenia, you will see that more than 98% of the citizens of Armenia um, are ethnical Armenians. Uh, so less than 2% are um, uh, ethnic minorities like uh, uh, Yezidi, uh, Russian, uh, Assyrian, as we heard from Father Nekodim, uh, Ukrainian, uh, Kurdish, uh, Greek, um, uh, Jews, uh, Georgian, and um, in the recent years we got also Persian and uh, Indish minorities, uh, Hindu minorities here. Um, so first of all, let me emphasize the role of uh, Armenian Apostolic Church. Uh, which is starting already in the fourth century. And as we have heard from our colleagues, um, yeah, there was a, um, a huge uh, um, heritage uh, by the church fathers. Um, but one thing is important that um, uh, the theological development uh, was not uh, constantly because there were a lot of uh, external uh, invasions uh, where uh, Armenian church uh, was forced to take uh, also a social political uh, role in the society and uh, was um, dedicated uh, also to juridical issues. So the Catholic states of Echmiadzin, um, uh, Ahtamar, uh, Kilikia, uh, and in Sunik, they were um, often playing also a political role in order to protect um, uh, their um, you know, followers. Uh, of course, the 
Uh, biggest crisis happened uh, during the First World War when uh, we had uh, genocide in uh, Ottoman Empire between 1915 and uh, 1923. Uh, so it was very hard for the church to collect uh, again or recollect again uh, whatever uh, was lost in uh, Western Armenia. But um, immediately after that, uh, uh, we have also 70 years of uh, communist regime uh, in this area where there is a persecution of religion and uh, also, um, yeah, it is not clear anymore, uh, can um, Christianity survive in this country or not? But um, of course, um, uh, yeah, we are uh, facing the um, closing of um, uh, monastic complexes during the uh, Soviet times. Um, so the tradition of uh, uh, spirituality uh, is uh, broken, but uh, nevertheless, uh, some uh, parishes are continuing to exist and um, some uh, priests are still getting uh, their education. Um, so it is a survival. It is showing that, um, yeah, also people are supporting their church um, and um, Whatever happens after the collapse of Soviet Union, it is uh, also showing that uh, yeah, the church plays a huge role in uh, the national ar uh, identity of um, Armenian people. But starting from 1988, uh, well, after uh, the um, big earthquake in the northern Armenia, especially in Spitak and Yumri, and uh, starting with the conflict with Azerbaijan in Nagorno-Karabakh, uh, many people um, uh, decide to turn, turn towards uh, religion and uh, to discover also yeah, spiritual values um, in their lives. Um, uh, especially during the conflict with Azerbaijan, also the na national identity or the religious belonging plays uh, uh, in some cases a uh, huge role. Um, and uh, we can see it also during the last escalations, for example, in 2016 in April, or also during the last war that um, unfortunately uh, um, many uh, external uh, terrorist groups, uh, for example, from Syria or from Pakistan or some other places were brought here uh, as jihadists in order to fight um, again. Um, Armenians, yeah, Armenian Christians. So um, uh, one thing is uh, important that Armenian Church, uh, uh, sorry, the Armenian state recognizes the freedom of uh, consciousness. So officially, uh, we have an article in our uh, constitution where um, it says that um, the Article 17 says uh, uh, in in its first part that um, um, the religious freedom is granted to uh, uh, any religious organization in Armenia. But at the same time, uh, it says that uh, in the second part of the same article, that um, Republic of Armenia recognizes the special mission um, of Armenian Apostolic Church uh, in the history and uh, in the spiritual life of um, uh, our nation. So that means that uh, currently we have a, a model of cooperation between uh, state and between um, the historical national church, which is the Armenian Apostolic Church. Uh, and it has uh, also uh, the rights, for example, uh, to go to um, uh, hospitals or to schools or to send its uh, chaplains to the army uh, as official um, uh, servicemen. Uh, nevertheless, as I said, we have uh, minorities, we have also new religious movements. And at the beginning of uh, 2000, it was clear that um, Armenian Apostolic Church is um, similar like in uh, most of the post-Soviet uh, countries or Eastern Orthodox countries, Eastern European countries. Uh, it's losing the monopoly, which was uh, for several centuries uh, part of our um, 
history and nowadays the, we we have to um, uh, face the new reality that there are also other uh, denominations or other groups um, and uh, movements, new new religious movements. So uh, it is interesting that at the beginning of 2000 there were about uh, uh, 50 religious denominations which were officially registered in our country and nowadays there are 65. Uh, but some of them they are uh, like a group of Pentecostal churches or uh, yeah, group of uh, evangelical churches which should be registered in, in each uh, parish or in each um, uh, part of the Republic. Uh, uh, and some of them are uh, yeah, belonging to national ethnic groups like Yezidi or Assyrian or uh, Jewish uh, groups. But we have also interesting cases like uh, um, Hetano Sakan Hong, uh, which is a revived uh, uh, pagan denomination, uh, trying to revive the uh, pre Christian traditions. So it is very interesting. And um, just to conclude, I think that um, uh, we see also a lot of critique about the classical version of um, traditionalism, well, especially I would say in the in a, in a capital of Armenia, in Yerevan, which is becoming like a um, 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 metropole or a megapolis, uh, uh, although it is not so big as Moscow or London or uh, New York, but but psychologically, people are moving, especially young people are moving towards individualism. So maybe there will be a paradigm ch uh, change uh, soon. And maybe, um, yeah, uh, the, there will be a new understanding of uh, individual religiosity or individual spirituality, which is also okay, the case. And uh, we will see how it will develop uh, in, a, in, a, in a future. Anyways, the heritage is very important and as uh, one of the yeah, oldest uh, countries uh, in this uh, region, we try to protect it and uh, we hope that our uh, uh, guests who will um, hear this um, a stream, they will come and visit us and see whatever is um, remaining uh, from the classical and from the more modern paradigms. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and because we have only two minutes, I just have to conclude. I would like to thank you uh, all for participating in our conversation. And we all hope together that we have provided interesting and informative facts to you. Thank you very much.